Nowadays, we watch movies uh, or television, and there is a never-ending stream of producers <laughs> in the credits. Uh, there is coordinating producers, and supervising producers, and associate producers, and co-producers, and five screens of executive producers, and then four screens of regular producers. There's just your name up there. And there was just your name at the beginning of the film. So, uh, again, to sort of demystify it a little bit, but, um, but, but not to belittle, of course, by any means. As the sole producer on a project, uh, and on several of the films, I would imagine, as well, your role, as it also relates, or specifically relates, to the collaboration that you have to go through with people like Nicholas Meyer, who you brought in to help with the script, is a script credit, but of course that doesn't tell us what parts he contributed to. Obviously Leonard Nimoy as the director, but this was his second outing as a director after Search for Spock. So as a, a producer and the sole producer, what, what is that like? Well, first let me explain the, the uh, proliferation of credits, as we called it just before I left California two years ago. Um, I think it's abysmal, and the Academy is, is, is taking steps to reduce it. Its origin has to do in television. In the history of television, comedy shows historically had writing tables four or five writers, because that's, that's why comedy is best written in a collaborative room with everybody throwing jokes in. Uh, drama never did. Uh, on Mont Squad, I had my story editor and me. And you have twice as much time to fill, and 22 stories to make up. And the members of my guild the Writers Guild of America, uh, are surprisingly few and far between professionals. It's, it's quite amazing. I've said this publicly, so I'm not doing anything out of spite or anger. It's just that a lot of people write a script, become members of the guild, and then they'll come into an office and say, well, what do you want me to write? Really creative writers are rare in any field, but certainly in motion pictures, and especially in drama. So, in order to create a writer's table, writers were brought in and given vanity titles. Uh, Co-producer, uh, co-executive producer, supervising, coordinating co-producer. <laughs> And that began this proliferation. Now, on the feature side, that is not necessarily true. But in the feature side, the problem is raising money. And as money dried up and bean counters took over the motion picture industry more and more, the only way to get people to uh, feel possessive about investing in a movie was to give them credit. And thus, you, every time you see a movie, you see about six logos, you know, uh, Smirnoff Films and uh, <laughs> uh, Grab Your Ear Productions presents. And all of them are simply investors. Uh, but they, uh, they end up getting producer or co-producer credit as well as a vanity and ego sop. So, it's not that I wanted to grab solo credit, it's just that uh, we didn't have anybody else. So <laughs> I built the void. My, uh, my son gave me a shirt once, uh, which explains what a producer does. And the question I'm asked really most often is, what does a producer do? Uh, it is a difficult question to answer because producers do different things in different media and in different circumstances. But his shirt answers the most generally. The shirt says, I cause things to happen. <laughs> Two weeks ago, when uh, an old friend, David Wolper, died, he was credited with that quotation, which I did not know. 
what do you do, uh, Mr. Walper? I cause things to happen. And he certainly, he certainly did.